So amulose. This is what actually breaks down your fruit or fructose. Then when you eat vegetables, you have something called trypsin. This actually breaks down your glucose. Well, when you need to start, these break down your carbohydrates and carbohydrates. We're just talking about carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. All right. Now, when you start eating proteins or what you would call plant protein, you have something called, it's, it's called pepsin. Pepsin creates pepsinogen. This creates a hydrochloric acid to go higher. This breaks down plant protein, showing you that your body is made for plant protein. You don't have an enzyme to truly break down meat. So it'll break it down into bits and pieces, but then still big chunks are, are left out. So what it does is it goes to this small, uh, it goes through something called the duodenum, which is right here. I'm going to show you. So it'll go through the duodenum. So you, you will eat this, you will eat this protein, right? Dang, I got orange peel in, uh, in my hand. You eat the protein, it'll go through the cardiac sphincter or the esophagus, then it'll end up in the stomach, right? Once it end up in the stomach, it goes into this small tract. This is called the duodenum. Inside the duodenum, notice you have the actual tail end of the gallbladder here, and we're going to talk about that too. But notice inside of here, it, it's a bunch of blood capillaries, a capillary bed, and it's a bunch of bacteria that helps break down your food. Look, your body is actually made to break down sugars, and it's made to break down amino acid structures that come from your vegetables and it's made to break down fat. It is not made to break down animal meat protein. It's not. And this is why when you eat animal meat protein, it don't get broken down all the way. Bits and pieces of the peptide chain be left over and it starts to knock over the capillary beds while it's trying to go into the bloodstream. It gets into the bloodstream super big. This is what you call excessive protein. The body then start taking it and they say, hold on, you can't be in the blood because you're going to kill me. And then it stick it into what you would call the interstitial fluid. The interstitial fluid is where the exchange of nutrients, the exchange of gases, because oxygen is a gas. Carbon dioxide, these are gases. This is where the exchange go. So you're not getting exchange uh, from, from the pneumocytes, from oxygen to carbon dioxide. You damn sure ain't getting the phytonutrients you need because you can't uptake them and absorb them because you have, you have obstructed putrefied meat still there that's not been broken down all the way. So the body say, hold on, man, I got to get you out of the interstitial fluid because my cells can't freaking breathe or can't eat the phytonutrients. So then it sticks it to the connective tissues. Now you're having all types of problems wrong with your muscles, wrong with your connective tissues. You really think you got arthritis, but technically it's not arthritis. It's just all these damn acids is burning the ligaments and burning your connective tissues. So then that hurts. So the body say, let me make this one last attempt. It breaks it down and it turns it into collagen, brings it back into the bloodstream, take it to the arteries. And then it literally goes and builds up into that little basal membrane side of the cells and this is what's causing your heart disease proteins when you look at kidney failure what damages kidneys y'all animal protein what they gonna check they gonna check your creatinine ain't they they gonna check your buns number your blood urine and nitrogen nitrogen comes from where oh protein oh nitrogen that's in the blood huh you you using the bathroom you seeing all that foam that's after your urine this that's protein leaking from the kidneys Messing up the nephrons, nephritis, that's protein damage to the nephrons. That's protein damage to the kidneys because your, your kidneys is not supposed to actually break down proteins. See that? It's not supposed to break down proteins. There's certain things that the kidneys bypass and bring it back into the bloodstream to be recycled again. So whenever you see proteins being leaked from the kidneys, it's because the proteins are tore up the kidneys and it's leaking in your urine. You can't tell me one good thing about animal protein. Again, I'm not talking about vegetable protein. I'm not talking about, which is nothing but amino acid structures. And I show sure ain't talking about fruit proteins or what you'll call simple or mono amino acid structures. I am here talking about complex amino Amino acid structures that come from eating animals' flesh or their byproducts. It byproducts. It is killing us, family. It is. Whether y'all want to agree to it or not, look, the proof is in the pudding. The proof is in the pudding, family. Let's go back on here. So check this out. So this is what I was saying. It says in order for human stomachs to break down meat, it must be high in hydrochloric acids. The stomach of humans and herbivores produce less than one twentieth of the acid produced by carnivores. Because we cannot digest meat properly, our pancreas must unnaturally produce more hydrochloric acid. See that? Ulcers. Leaky gut. Because too much acid is being produced because your body is trying its hardest to break down its protein. You see that? 
It says inviting disease and sickness after the meat passes through the stomach it goes to the intestines humans take about 12 to 8 hours to digest their food while carnivores only take three and this is where you call putrefaction sets in putrefaction sets in you can't get rid of the things because the hydrocaloric acid is not hot enough to break these proteins down so then what happens is the microorganisms get tired of working trying to help break these pro these uh proteins down through fermentation because you can't ferment a protein you only can ferment a sugar Showing you that you're supposed to be on a sugar diet, not a protein diet, a galactose diet that comes from your mother's milk, a fructose diet that comes from your fruits. You see that? What you would call a monosaccharide, a glucose diet that sometimes comes from your vegetables. Never a putrefaction diet. The amino, the, the actual microorganisms that's inside of our stomach, inside of our intestines is made to ferment food. We go through a fermentation process. We don't go through a putrefaction process because it don't, it takes too long for our bodies to fully digest uh, 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 vegetables. It takes, it takes a long time to even for it to fully digest certain fruits. I mean, when you eating things like cucumbers in your melon family, it take about two hours to fully digest and pass through, but even fruits take a long time to digest in the body. Imagine proteins sitting there rotten in your gut. Same thing that roadkill look like on the street. It don't break down easy because it's protein. Same thing. If you die right now, rigor mortis sets in. It's going to take a long time for your body to decay. Guess what helps break down your body? Huh? Microorganisms. Guess what these microorganisms turn to when they breaking down a dead body? No, notice if you see anything dead that's that's of terrestrial descendants. You're going to see parasites, you're going to see flies, you're going to see maggots, and you're going to see worms because the microorganisms have to pleomorphize themselves to eat different food, to eat different food. It's kind of like me. If I wanted to eat a damn 50 pound burger, if I could pleomorphize myself to become a bigger person to eat it, I would do that because it's going to be impossible for me to, to eat a 50 pound burger. My cells have the actual gift of pleomorphizing. I don't, but my cells do. So when they see things that they need to get rid of to keep it from harming the body, they will change their structure and functionality to actually eat these things. Guess what you call them? A parasite. Guess what they have you believing that you got it from outside of your body when it was inside of your body the whole damn time coming from the glaring of your cells. Now, am I saying that you can't catch a parasite from outside the body? I'll be lying. You can, you can catch toxioplasmosis from a cat. You can you can catch a fluke worm from stepping on dog poop. So you can catch parasites from outside the body. But guess where these parasites started from inside of something else cells. Most of these things starts from the body and you're getting it from your food. The food need to be broken down. The body's trying to save itself. So it'll pleomorphize the microorganisms that's trying to ferment the food. It's going to change them for they can actually putrefy the food. And y'all call it a parasite. These are the facts, family. Not making none of this up. And I'm going to show you how to get rid of this stuff. I mean, of course, the first thing is stop eating meat. It gave me, look, that and the drugs I was on when I was younger, it gave me a heart attack. They, they said I would never heal my heart, not heal my heart. Here go another one, y'all. It says the metabolism and significance of homocysteine and nutrients in health. Now, remember, homocysteine actually come from high consumption of eating meat. Now, homocysteine is very, very bad for the body. They call it HCY. All right. Now, look what it says. This says it says shown in several age related pathologies such as osteoporosis, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, stroke, cardiovascular disease. Also, HCY is associated, but not limited to cancer. You see that aneurysm, hypothyroidism, renal stage disease. Renal means uh, kidney, y'all. Look, vitamin B, C deficiency, vitamin 12 deficiency, folate deficiency. And this is all in a meat enriched diet, y'all. Y'all can get on common Google right now and see how you get high levels of homocysteine in the body. It's going to tell you from heavy meat consumption right now, y'all. We have to quit eating meat, y'all. There's no way around it. Look, check this out. Does high levels of homocysteine in the blood and in the body come from eating meat? Let's see what it says. According to WebMD, homocysteine is a common amino acid in your blood. You get it mostly from eating meat. <laughs> High levels of it are linked to early development of heart disease. Y'all see that? Homocysteine is a common amino acid in your blood. You get it mostly from eating meat. 
high levels of it are linked to early development of heart disease. In fact, a high, le a high level of homocysteine is risk factor for heart disease. Most of your heart attacks, most of your strokes, most of your osteoporosis, most of all the things that's going on with your body is related to meat consumption. Y'all can, can't nobody jump on her and tell me wrong. We got all these, these Caucasian doctors, you know, champion for this carnivore diet. And most of the people that's been on a carnivore diet come to me now. And I told them that I said, y'all going to end up getting Reno disease, listening to these doctors, eating all this meat. Of course, she's going to feel good in the first place, in the, in, in the first half, because you're fasting. You're on a mono diet. You're only eating meat. Of course, your, your ketones going to kick in. You're going to drop weight. You're on this high fat diet. You're going to feel good. Your brain going to be firing off because in a, in a sense, you are intermittent fasting. You're not eating all day and then you're limiting your, your, your diet to just fats for real. So, of course, you're going to you, you you're not getting that much sugars no more. You're going to see your muscles build up. You go your abs going to come in. But then you got to face the consequences a year later. You're going to have to face them consequences. And most of y'all come see me because y'all kidneys start failing. Why is the kidneys failing? Because the proteins is damaging the nephrons. You start having heart pa uh, palpitations. Why is your heart and your rhythmic frequency of your heart is off? All oh, because something is blocking the arteries and keeping blood from flowing properly to that heart. Oh, you got a bunch of migraines and headaches now. What's going on there? Oh, you blocking the actual arteries to, to get blood actually to the brain. Oh, your bones is hurting now. Oh, you not absorbing. See that? You're not, di you're not digesting, absorbing, you're not utilizing, and you're not eliminating because you're eating the wrong foods. See, it all sounds crazy. Everybody call me a quack. Everybody say I'm out of my mind. But everything I say is always coming to pass. Why is that? And I'm not the only one saying this stuff. Just because you read it don't mean it's true. They pay scientists millions and millions of dollars a year to their campaigns to tell lies about their studies. You got to know. You got to feel what's wrong and what's right. And then you have to get out here and get in the field and seeing if it's working on people. We have to just quit reading and taking people word for it. Get out in that field and you see what meat eating is doing to people. And guess how you see what it's doing to people. Somebody come to you sick. They're nine times out of ten. Three of their meals out of day is going to have meat on the plate. Remove the meat off their plate. Remove the grains and the gluten off their plate. Remove all these things off their plate. And then and don't even give them herbs. Just remove the meat and the grains off their plate. Tell them to come back in two months. They're going to feel much better. Arthritis goes away. Inflammation goes away. Swelling of the internal organs goes away. Blood pressure goes down because you don't need hydrostatic pressure or, or, or oncotic pressure anymore because you don't have nothing blocking the airways or the artery waves. So you're not forcing the blood to press against the arteries to make it to the heart. So hypertension, high blood pressure goes down. You see that systolic and diastolic levels goes down. Your 180 is now 120. Your 110 is now 80 or 70. Now you neutral. Now you're normalized. You 120 over 70 and 80. You back normal just by eating the right foods. All look, all of, it's all in our face, y'all. We're just in denial because we in, we addicted to what we've been eating, family. And we have been indoctrinized by the allopathic community and by the televisions and by the radio stations and by the line ass education system in the schools we was put through, forced to go to. And you know that it ain't natural because our children don't want to go there. And then half the time we got to beat them to act right and do good in school because they naturally not feeling that bull crap that they teaching our children. We can't even comprehend the stupidity and the lies that they are teaching us. And then they say that we have mental disabilities. We have a learning disability. Yo, children ain't got no learning disability. They peep in the bullshit and it don't make sense to them. And you should ask yourself, why do this stuff make sense to you? Have you been indoctrinated? Let's keep going, though. So we see we just read that that homocysteine actually causes the uh, heart disease. And we see that it comes from high meat consumption. And, and look, high meat consumption is three meals a day. What you eat today, how many plates did you did you have meat on? Probably all of them. I know I used to. I know I used to. For breakfast, I most definitely have me some turkey bacon. I never ate pork in my life. My mama was Muslim. You see that? My pops and them was Hebrew Israelite, so I never had pork in my life, but I damn sure had some turkey bacon for breakfast. Turkey bacon. I couldn't really have eggs and stuff because I'm naturally just lactose intolerant. Thank God my body, God designed my body where the stuff that I don't that I don't need to eat, I have a bad reaction to it anyway. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I have a bad reaction to it anyway. But I get I did have turkey bacon. 
Oh, uh, yeah. Then for lunch. Oh, man, I'm going to have me a hot dog. Yes, a turkey hot dog. And for dinner, I'm either I'm I'm deep in the Hebrew community. I'm either eating me some lamb, some goat or some bison. Three meals a day. And that is crazy. If you eat, if you eat three meals a day, that is gluttony. Three meals a day is just absurd, y'all. Three meals a day is the craziest shit I ever heard in my life. And we used to follow these things, y'all. We used to follow these meal plans. Three meals a day? And you only ha having how many bowel movements? Where do you think this stuff is going? It's not just staying in your gut. It is leaping. It's seeking into your bloodstream. It's seeking into your lymphatic system. It is seeking into your connective tissues. It is literally messing with the exchange of nutrients and oxygen and carbon dioxide and phytonutrients to the cells. Most of this stuff is stopping sun penetration. You know, sunlight needs to penetrate the tissues, go beyond the tissues with, with near infrared light and then penetrate inside the cells. And this is what helps actually fold your amino acids. You can't even get that with certain meat consumption because you got flesh on top of unnatural flesh on top of unnatural flesh. Well, you are not made to eat meat. It's killing you. But look, that's hearsay. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going, family. All right. We talked about that one. What this one say? Meat consumption and cancer risk. Oh, we. Now, this one starts getting into something called heterocyclic amines. So you can completely have you can have the best. Look, you can have the best grass fed meat. Oh, man, that cow didn't go through stress. I killed it when it wasn't looking. I didn't walk it down. And, you know, it wasn't around. Other, and I never gave it an antibiotic. This is organic cow raised beef. The best in the business. The best in the business. Oh, but you got to put a fire to it, though. See, if you wore a carnivore and you ate that cow raw, it'd be very, very beneficiary to beneficiary to the actual beneficial. I mean, to the actual carnivore, because it's going to eat it with the blood in it. Most of the nutrients is in the blood. Yes. And anybody that think that you can fully cook blood out of meat, you a damn lie. Blood stains. You talk to a person that do blood analysis, blood stains, you burn blood, blood still is still there. It don't disintegrate and disappear out of thin air. It creates a stain or a blot. That's the reason. And then you see the heme or the non heme urn with the blood and the oxygen rusts and turns of color. That's why when you cook meat, it, 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 it have this darkest pinkish color. Y'all, you never really cook blood out of meat. Y'all, you, you cook the blood no you don't you it's impossible to cook every molecule from the blood out of the meat all the molecules that made up the blood it's still within the molecular tissue of the meat you just getting it second hand that's why if you see a carnivore track down its prey it eats it damn near alive it don't even kill it yet it will get the juggler make sure that it's bleeding out and then it wants all of those hormones all of those fight or flight chemistries all of those nutrients it's getting all of that out of there because most of the nutrients is in what y'all the blood is not really in the tissues if you look at the exchange of nutrients in the body it is made by the interstitium fluid do y'all want me to pull up the exchange? Matter of fact, let's just do it. Let's just do it. Because I know somebody going to say y'all keep lying. The interstitial fluid exchange of nutrients to the bloodstream. Here you go. Capillary exchange. Let's show y'all this. I don't got to lie about nothing. See that? Now we finna start and get into osmotic pressure. Look, check this out. Remember when I was talking about osmotic pressure, oncotic pressure, hydrostatic pressure? This is talking about the net fluid. See that? These are the actual artery walls where the urethrocytes or the blood sites is at. But if you look here, these are cells up here. Between this, you have fluid. Within this, you have these little capillaries that sits around. See that? The venous end of the capillary exchange is here. You will see Na+, plus, which is salt. I mean, sodium here. You will see K plus, which is potassium here. And it's an interchange that happened between the actual fluid. Most of the interstitial fluids is what holds all the nutrients. And then what happens is the capillary in the body picks and chooses what it needs. So it'll pick it out of the fluids and then it will allow itself into the capillary bed by way of the exchange due to osmotic pressure, oncotic pressure, or hydrostatic pressure. So your exchange of nutrients goes on in the fluids, y'all. In the fluids. So y'all getting meat. And then y'all cooking all of the blood out of the meat and all the fluids out of the meat. You actually cooking all of the nutrients out of the meat. So you're left with what? 
util already utilize metabolized proteins. And you actually think you're really getting something from that. Man, y'all is crazy, man. But y'all, y'all learn this from the y'all learning this from a people that would never teach you nothing to keep you free, ever. Ever in life. But hey, y'all keep crazy though. <laughs> y'all keep crazy. Heart disease and homocysteine. Check this out. Homocysteine is a common amino acid in your blood. You get it mostly from eating meat. High levels are linked to early development of heart disease. In fact, high levels of homocysteine is a risk factor for heart disease. It's associated with low levels of vitamin B6 and B12 because you can't utilize the folates. You can't utilize the nutrients because it's impossible for the nutrients to make it inside the bloodstream because it has an actual, it, acts, it has an obstruction. Something is blocking it. Something is blocking it. See that? Why is homocysteine associated with higher risk of heart disease? And we're going to get into it, y'all. Look, it can lead to osteoporosis, the hardening of the arteries and blood clots. Didn't I just show y'all that right here? Hardening of the arteries. That's going to cause a clot because if blood coming through and it's pressing and it's raising that, that oncotic pressure. Or that, or that uh, hydrostatic pressure, what it's going to do is it's going to try to force itself through that wall. So blood is going to coagulate right here in that area. Blood is going to coagulate, and then cholesterol is going to come, try to help the blood out. This is going to be solidified through calcium. Now you have a clot that can't make it through. What you call that if it's in your heart? They call it a heart attack. It's really you attacking your heart. The heart ain't attacked you. The body ain't done nothing wrong to you. You are doing wrong to your body. What happened if it's in the cervical? Huh? Or the axillary stroke. You see that? What's happening if it's, if, if it's in the ganglia? Stroke. Is y'all really understanding what I'm saying? Let's keep it going, though. Let's keep it going. And then I'm going to show you how to stop this stuff. Now, let's, let's show you how this works. All right, so this is HCY, what you would call homocysteine, which is amino acid that come from excessive meat eating, you know, eating meat two to three times a day. I wouldn't eat it, period. But you, if you if you so addicted to eating dead, rotten animals, corpse, which is very, 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 I mean, very, very ritualistic. It's like some dark ritualistic shit to drain the blood out of something. Don't sound like a ritual. Blank, drain the blood out of something. Put it on the grill cook its cells in its flesh, then pray over it to your God and then bite into it. Cannibalism. That's what it sounds like. Barbaric cannibalism. That's what it sounds like to me. And I'm not talking about them. I'm just saying when you read this, when you read this, it just sounds very, very, very witchcrafty to me. You know, you, you kill it or you pay somebody that killed it. Whether you get it from the store or not, you still pay somebody to kill it. So you're going out and you're murdering innocent animals that haven't done a damn thing to you. You drain his blood or you pay somebody to drain his blood. Then you cook the blood. Why, why are you cooking it? Most likely you got some type of music going on. You probably got your glass of wine and your wines and your spirits. You know, you dancing. You know, you got your steak with your wine glass. You got music in the back. All this shit is super, super spiritual. You don't even realize the whole symbology around this. Yes. Then you will put it on the plate, put some seasonings on it. Don't you use this stuff in witchcraft? Last, you use all of these herbs and witchcraft too. You putting it on the meat with the blood, and then you have the nerve to bow your head and spread forth your hands and pray to God over the murderous, treacherous thing that you just did to the meat, and then you consume the thing. That's crazy. That is a damn. That is an evil ritual, and you don't even know it. You don't even know it. Just saying. Just saying. If you, if you think I'm playing, get into studying Gomori, Gomori work, spell casting, blood rituals and sacrifice. That's what they're doing. They do the same thing to little children. Drain their blood. Take the innocent. Murder them while they're in fear. Then they do it for adrenochrome. What are you doing it for? Huh? And let, let's not talk about how you are sexually stimulated by your meat. Let's not talk about how you are sexually stimulated by your mm, 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 damn that was good. You damn near ejaculated eating the meat. 
Huh? Yeah, oh, you forgot they done stuffed it with all types of sexual hormones because they need them to reproduce fast, especially with the chicken. The chicken have so many sexual horm stimulating hormones in it because they injecting it with so many sexual growth hormones for they can reproduce and grow faster and grow bigger. You you taking all this, you bite into that crispy chicken, you having a, a damn whole orgasm, and you ain't even associated this thing to sex. You are sexually addicted to your food and you don't even realize it. Then let's not talk about the shapes of these foods. The hot dog, the Snickers shaped like a penis, a melanated penis, veins in it and everything. Uh, yes, the drips out caramel. What y'all think this stuff comes? You think well, it could have been any other design in the world, but it's designed like that. It's designed like that, though. Why is it designed like that? Hot dogs going between buns. Pieces. Why do? Why is the shape of a pizza the shape of an actual wound? Shape of a wound. And then why do pedophiles call doing it and raping in little boys and little girls pizza gate? That is a pedophile word, pizza gate. And you will see some of your famous actors and some of your famous celebrities. Yeah, we had a pizza party. Type of party. They had a pizza party. What y'all was doing? Can you invite me over? Yeah, El DeGeneres and them, them, them six of them. Yeah, them. Most of them on house arrest right now. Yeah. <laughs> a pedophile ring high in a political pool right now and most of them on house arrest. High names that you would never think of. Talking about, yeah, we had a, we invited her in. I want to take you to my pizza party. Why is sex so associated, closely associated to your food? Just saying. Hey man, look. Hey, call me. Yes, Hil Obama, Hillary, all of that. Yes, boy. Boy, I got some pictures with. I got some pictures with Oprah with a uh with a damn house arrest thing on. El DeGeneres on her last show, she had an ankle monitor on too. I got pictures of this stuff, but it's so much stuff I can't talk about on these airways. I gotta upload them to Yaki TV. Y'all know how they took my channels down last time, but look back to it though. So check this out. All right. So homocysteine molecules. So this shows you how everybody say that LDL is bad cholesterol. All right. But it's really not. Notice what the LDL is doing. So you see that the homocysteine is coming through and it's ripping and it's tearing away at the artery vessels in the artery wall. Next thing we know, we see that LDL cholesterol is going to come through and start scabbing. Well, I'm not going to say scabbing yet. It's going to start patching and stitching up this area. Once the cholesterol comes and patch and stitch up this area, then you have calcium that's going to come and solidify this area. Area and create an eternal stat, a scab. Now, what happens is protein is going to keep coming and builds itself in these scabs. See, it's starting to happen right here. You, when you start seeing the actual wall tear, this is the basal layer, membrane, because protein is sticking itself, constantly sticking itself into this layer. So then you start getting this thick area of collagen or 100% protein building up, closing off the vessels or closing off the artery, uh, artery wall, and boom, this is where you get your heart attack, stroke, kidney disease, and everything else. All right? Let's go into some more articles. And then after that, I'm going to show y'all what to do. And then uh, I'm going to answer some of y'all calls. All right, here go another one, y'all. There's so many of them, y'all. I'm talking about so many of these deals. Uh, let's see what else I got for y'all. Look, check this out. This is how much people eat meat right now. As we speak right now, look at that. Tons of meat eating globally. And we wonder why the real pandemic is heart disease. Look at it. Eating meat right now. In 2024. And don't even know that this is one of the main causes of your heart failing, your kidneys failing, high blood pressure, hydrostatic pressure, oncotic pressure, hypertension. Yes, inflammatory so-called diseases like uh, uh, arthritis. You see that? Y'all better quit listening to these people. And then for the people, well, what about fish? Last I checked, fish was an animal. It just lived in the water. Fish had eyes. Fish bleed. Fish is made of protein. You need proteins from the plant kingdom, particularly from the plant that, that yields forth seed. That seed or that reproductive part of the plant is actually called 
your protein. That's the protein you need. I like to call it a simple amino acid structure. That's it. You don't need a complex amino acid structure that have already been metabolized through another living organism. And your body have to literally make it rot and putrefy it and cause all types of bacteria to pleomorphize into parasites like hookworms, tapeworms, flukeworms, fasciolopsis, booskies to even help break these things down. They can't break it down. So they say the hell with that. Let me go wreak havoc on some.